Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of new Holmes K rums that I've recently picked up. One being from Barbados and the other one from Belize. Now of course with Holmes K you have to understand that they are an independent bottler. Okay, so they're going all over the world sourcing fantastic rum casks, bringing them back to their base in New York. Sometimes they're going to bottle them directly, other times they're going to age them up a little longer there. Sometimes, though, in the case of this Barbados, they actually transfer, uh, transfer it to a finishing cask. Uh, because this Barbados rum, while it was distilled in 2012 there in Foursquare, spent eight years there in ex-bourbon barrels before they actually transferred it to New York, put it into a port cask for an additional year of maturation, and in 2021, they actually bottled it at 110 proof. Retail pricing on this bottle was about that, $110, $120. Uh, the next one we're going to take a look at is a brand new private selection store pick, basically, uh, done by the Tilted Bottle here in Dallas. Now, Tilted Bottle is actually the Instagram handle of a spec store, uh, the big spec store in Dallas. It's the one on 75 and Walnut Hill. Uh, but this Belize 16-year-old spent its entire maturation in ex bourbon barrel cast, so there's no finishing cask involved. Um, the one thing to remember is that the Traveler's Distillery, where it was made back in, it was distilled in 2006, uh, uses a three-column still. So they're very going to be very light, very uh, fruit-forward typically. But again, that does not mean it's always going to be that way. Uh, but sometimes the viscosity suffers. Not always, but sometimes. Um, this one, bottled at 122 proof. 122, that's huge. So we're going to see what that transfers like onto the nose and palate after we start with the 110 proof Barbados 9-year port cask. All right, on the nose here. Great, it's big brown sugar, big molasses. Almost a little bit of a, there's a big, I would almost call this pecan pie type character to this one on the nose. Toffee, that's another element you could consider there. It's um, sour plums, sour cherries on the nose. Big baking spices. A little bit of orange oil. A little bit of a, kind of like a overripe pineapple where it's still very acidic, but it's actually losing the sweetness. That's in here as well. Ooh. All right, let's taste it. Wow, medium, at least a medium viscosity, maybe a smidge over. It has that, mm, it has that big brown sugar that we were picking up on the nose, comes right through on the palate. That big molasses as well. The fruits are a little muted. You do get to pick up that little sour cherry, that little bit of soured plum as well. That acidic pineapple, that tone is actually in here, but it's underneath those fruits. That pecan, that sweet caramel, toffee tone, that's in there as well. Starts showing up right after that. You get that mid-swell of that baking spice with the, again, little nutmeg, a little more clove, a little cinnamon. That is well integrated on the mid palate, and it was after that where you almost start getting into a walnut characteristic where it starts getting a little dry. But you're still picking up a very big pull of that kind of molasses, almost like a cola type aspect on the finish. Overall, very, very well done for a nine year old Barbados. Of course, one thing we also have to keep in mind about the Foursquare Distillery, they use a combination of stills. They're using pot stills for viscosity, and they're using column stills for, again, flavor kind of development. And so those two together, they, they always create really, really solid rums. And when I mentioned the sweetness that I was picking up, the one thing that Holmes K never does is they don't add any additional sugars. They don't chill filter. They talk about that on the front of every bottle. So these are very, very pure rum. So you don't have to worry about, uh, well, are they adding sugars? That's not the case. All right. Belize, 16-year-old, ex-bourbon barrel, 
from 2006 when it was distilled to 2022. On the nose, that's unique. That is off profile for a Belize rum. You know, I've had other, several other Holmes K Belize rums. I've had some other brands that have done, you know, other single cask offerings. And typically I find a big kind of almost like a butterscotch note on these. That's not this one. This one is so off profile. Matter of fact, what I would call this one, it, it almost reminds me uh, on the nose of an aged agricole rum. So agricole meaning it's not made from, not distilled from molasses, it's being distilled from the actual sugar cane juice. Typically those distillates get, uh, they definitely get funky. This isn't super funky, but what it does get is a, a grassiness, an herbaceousness to it. This has that on the nose. I would call this one like light caramel, a little bit of lemon oil, kind of a, it's a little hint of plum, but it's actually leaning a little more on that lemon oil and almost like a, I don't know, yamish type, sweet potato type thing on the nose. Lots of herbal, lots of herbal here. It almost picks up like a little bit, like almost like if there was a little bit of a, an Amaro in it. Lots of bitter component. It almost reminds me of a, well, let's taste it before I say that. Let me taste it. Here we go. Mm. Wow. Okay. Medium viscosity. Maybe a touch. Yeah. It, it, it almost rides a little under, but it's a good medium viscosity. Very. Wow. It's almost like an eau de vie. Very brandy ish, grape ish. That's unusual. Wow. If you, were no, if you were tasting that blind, you might almost think that's a brandy. Because you're not hit with that big molasses, that dense, dark rum that you typically find. This one is more, again, kind of that grapeish eau de vie. Um, you get a little bit of that lemon oil that sweet grass in there, cardamom, you'll get a little bit of um, that sweet potato, that yam character is definitely in here. A little bit of celery seed, cardamom, those two things are usually not found in a lot of rums, but they're in this one. not overly sweet and there is a lot of bitter component and what I was going to say when I was nosing it but I wanted to taste it before I said it was there is an element to this that reminds me of a component to what the navel rums were so the navel rums they were not sweet at all they were very dark usually bitter um, and they kind of have a lot of this characteristic in it they are typically a little more mouth coating But if you want a like if you want a kind of a, a navel style rum, big bitterness, not a lot of sweetness, this is going to hit that profile. Or if you like brandies and you're looking for maybe getting into the rum world, you're going to really like this one. This is so off profile, um, but it was kind of enjoyable once you get away from the mindset of, you know, oh this is going to be just like a, all the Belize rums I've ever had. No, it's definitely not that. But, yeah. The, on the back end, there's almost like a little bit of a very light green coffee bean where it's starting to get 
a little there's a little hint of like a potpourri but it kind of drives in with this that herbaceousness that it had on the mid palate the bitter component like a little bit of a straw element as well that lemon oil on the finish does get a little bit of a a little bit of an orange accent there is a little bit of like a fig newton i think that's the the that sweet potato that we were picking up early kind of trans Positions a little bit to almost like a fig newton type flavor on the back end Super unique, okay, but this just goes to show you that uh, Holmes K is still doing really really solid picks um, You know, they're not always going to be on profile. Sometimes they're just going to be um, Good unique rums, but I will say the majority of the Holmes K picks that I've found out there are phenomenal um, you're, they're always going to be at least good. Sometimes they'll be, again, you know, phenomenal, uh, just over the top. But really good buys. I hope you enjoyed this video review. Of course, if you're on Patreon, you're getting this video ad-free in two weeks early uh, before the YouTube launch. So you're going to be able to get out there and pick up these bottles. So if you can, join us over at patreon.com slash liquorhound. Uh, there, you, again, you're going to get that private review library no ads on the videos and such and you're going to support me uh, picking up bottles like these because I am not sponsored so you're getting my unbiased reviews here uh, but I hope you enjoyed it and whether you're watching on YouTube or Patreon I greatly appreciate each and every one of you keep leaving all those great comments and I'll get to them just as soon as I can everyone have a great day and cheers